thank you, um, audience in Melbourne, for having us, um, our lovely audience at home, just, you know, general working people, working hard for your money, nine to five, like Dolly said. Uh, <laughs> um, my esteemed colleagues on stage, uh, our esteemed adjudicator, everyone's esteemed, a lot of esteem tonight, Barry Humphreys. I'm a huge fan, uh, and it's a privilege to be here today, I feel. Joel Creasy, Hello. it's amazing to have you here. I mean, you're gayer than Christmas. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you could find the time and your busy schedule to be here with us today. And I know that having New Year's like having Australian royalty. And, I, you know, you're the queen, though. <laughs> um, and also, I would like to welcome Nazim. Uh, I'm not going to say anything mean about you because I've met your mother. <laughs> And let's face it, the only mothers more protective over their little boys than Jewish mothers are Muslim mothers. And she's a single mother and she knows where I live, so... <laughs> Sarah Pascoe... My mum's Muslim as well. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I've nibbled her before. Um... <laughs> no, it's always an honour to work with you because you're a feminist, you're an atheist, you're vegan, not a lot of people know this. That sucks up a lot of energy out of the human body. <laughs> and I always wonder, how do you have the energy, how do you sustain yourself with a bit of kale soup and a nut? A day? <laughs> and I have, actually, I'm worried about you because I respect you as a fellow woman, as a fellow comedian, just as a fellow human being. I look at you and I worry because I recently read that vegans don't live as long as normal people. <laughs> because they don't want to. <laughs> Is everyone entitled to an opinion? Hmm, let's look at that. I grew up in South Africa and I know that a lot of people would say, well, if you don't give people an opinion, that is how apartheid grows. However, it's important to know that a great nation is built on the people having a voice, not on the opinions of fools. I know that, because a lot of people with opinions don't bother with facts and shit. They just go rolling in hard. And initially, I thought this argument was going to be very hard, but then we have the Westboro Baptist Church. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever wondered, you know, are we all equal? No. <laughs> Their most famous sign to me is, God hates fags. No, no, no. God hates bigots, you fucking idiots. <laughs> And then the big argument, Donald Trump, uh, and weirdly, my wife looks quite a lot like him. <laughs> they share the same hairstyle. <laughs> and tanning salon, for that much. <laughs> now, if anyone can prove that we should all not just spout our opinions, it's Donald Trump. Um, he has a mouth and he's not afraid to use it. Um, I think we need a think tank and have to figure out how to surgically remove opinions from that man. And especially the one that says uh, the woman should be punished for having abortions. Only the woman, nobody else. <laughs> because when it comes to women having abortions, that is the one place where ain't nobody's fucking allowed an opinion. It only comes down to the woman. We don't need your opinion. We don't want your opinion. Shut the fuck up. Great. Great sister. Woo. Yes. Woo. We also don't need nuns telling us about relationships and how to pick partners and sexual... Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> also, an opinion that gets raised a lot is skinny people telling fat people what not to eat. If I can just ask uh, all the personal trainers and dietitians, stop following me around the supermarket. <laughs> but the thing is, because people have opinions, but they don't bother with facts at all, and you'll hear stuff like, well, I don't think we should allow refugees in. We're full. Australia's full. Well, actually, you've got the entire middle bit. It's completely open. <laughs> 
If you truly believe that everyone should have an opinion, that means we're opening the microphone to the Reclaim Australia types, you know, and God knows they've got opinions. Um, you know, we can't open it to every racist asshole because that's what makes you famous online. That what, that's what makes you go viral. The only time I'd agree that everyone is entitled to an opinion is if we all come with a mute button and the rest of us can use it. <laughs> So that if somebody starts with, why don't you fuck off back? Then we can just all go <laughs> But at the end of the day, sure, you know, opinions, opinions can hurt. We need to apply some common sense to everything because if everyone's entitled to an opinion, yeah, okay, everyone's entitled to wear a bikini. That doesn't mean you fucking should. <laughs> <laughs> so opinions are sharper than scalpels, all right? And as comedians, we know this. When a, a reviewer comes in and they cut your stuff to shit and that you've worked on for a whole year, it takes them two paragraphs to cut you to bits. Because let's face it, opinions are like Lego in the night, unexpected and extremely painful. <laughs> She said the greatest deception men suffer is their own opinion. So let's stop lying to ourselves. Finally, if you truly believe that everyone is entitled to an opinion, I give you Kanye West, <laughs> the God avatar. That is the inflated ego leaving opinions like dry dog shit all over the world. Let's get rid of him. <laughs> you know, um, if you think that everyone's entitled to an opinion, it's very dangerous because at some point, when you say, that's just my opinion, it's almost as offensive as starting a sentence with, I'm not racist, but. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a disclaimer to fuckwitism. Thank you so much.